Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing us to present our data. I want to acknowledge my co-authors and our institution. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. Uh, so first I'm going to just start uh, with a, a brief history of gastroparesis since uh, most surgeons don't deal with it uh, frequently. And it is a, a symptomatic chronic disorder that's characterized by delayed gastric emptying and you have to prove that there's no mechanical obstruction. The, the main symptoms are nausea, vomiting, early satiety, bloating, and abdominal discomfort. Uh, severe nausea and vomiting can be quite debilitating with uh, uh, loss of quality of life and the loss of ability to go to work or school. Uh, there are potentially life-threatening complications uh, with the nausea and vomiting as well with electrolyte imbalance, dehydration, malnutrition, and poor glycemic control in diabetics. Uh, the etiology of gastroparesis is uh, mostly idiopathic. Uh, th these patients are the most difficult to control. They frequently are taking a lot of pain medication for uh, back pain or other disorders. Uh, there is a large percentage of diabetics, 29%, and then the post-surgical patients are 13%, which are frequently after anti-reflux operations done at other institutions, hopefully. Uh, um, the, the mainstay of uh, initial treatment is drug therapy to control nausea and vomiting and prokinetic agents. And some of the prokinetic agents actually worked quite well, but if you look at this list of um, medications, either they're, they have uh, very uh, significant side effect profiles which are, are uh, difficult to prescribe the medications, unavailable in the United States, or you have to get on compassionate use only. Uh, for drug refractory patients, th there are uh, very few good options. Uh, enteral options are gastrostomy tube for decompression or jejunostomy tube for feeding. Um, um, there are complications with tubes, especially if you think this is going to be a long-term solution. Uh, Botox injection actually, of the pylorus actually works in, in a lot of these patients, uh, but just like Botox everywhere else, it is temporary. Uh, surgical procedures are gastrectomy, pyloroplasty, gastrogegenostomy, and uh, ruin-wide diversions uh, such as a gastric bypass. So here we are to gastric electrical stimulation since none of those options are ideal. Uh, historically, there was high voltage, low frequency application of uh, the current, and that actually entrained gastric pacemaker cells, uh, but it had no effect on symptoms. So the, the researchers changed the way that it, that it worked and used low voltage, high frequency, and that has absolutely no impact on the pacemaker cells, but there were symptomatic improvements. Uh, and there was a question of, uh, improved gastric emptying in the uh, initial uh, pilot studies. So our hypothesis was that gastric electrical stimulation improved solid uh, phase gastric emptying symptom scores and quality of life in patients with severe gastroparesis. Our inclusion criteria, uh, this was all done under IRB protocol. Um, the device is a humanitarian use device which mandates that it be used under uh, IRB protocol at your institution. Uh, all patients had disabling nausea and uh, vomiting symptoms for greater than one year and were refractory to medications, uh, documented uh, delayed gastric emptying on uh, nuclear gastric emptying scan, medically stable and nutritionally stable. Uh, this is the stimulator. Uh, the, um, the device on the right is the actual implanted uh, device in the subcutaneous pocket. There are two gastric leads and the external he held uh, programmer, which is in my office all the time. Uh, it, it, it can be implanted either with a mini laparotomy or a laparoscopy. Our initial, uh, our initial patients were done with laparotomy to make sure that we could figure out where to place it. Then we, for the last uh, three years, they've all been laparoscopic. You have to perform intraoperative endoscopy to help uh, define the level of the pylorus and as you're placing the lead to make sure that the lead does not go uh, through the mucosa. Uh, there are two leads, 10 centimeters 
proximal to the uh, pylorus and two centimeters apart. Uh, the, the current device settings, five milliamps of current, uh, and the impedance is uh, patient dependent. The outcome measures were a solid phase gastric emptying scan, symptom score, and quality of life uh, measurement, was, which was the SF36, and that was obtained preoperatively six months, 12 months, and 24 months. Uh, we've uh, now done 47 patients between 2002-2009. Uh, we have follow-up on 46 patients at six months, 37 patients at 12 months, and 17 patients at 24 months. Uh, at this rate, we're, we're enrolling 12 to 15 patients per year uh, over the last three or four years. Two patients deceased. One uh, was a um, uh, cardiac death in the first six months. The second was chronic renal failure, uh, and it was determined that it was unrelated to the device. Two devices have been explanted. One uh, patient was, it was, the therapy was not effective, and uh, one patient actually had spontaneous improvement of gastric emptying and uh, symptoms, and the device was turned off, the patient still was better. Uh, at six months, the uh, symptom scores improved by 16 points, 12 months, tw 21 points, and 24 months, 19 points. Uh, the SF36 physical uh, increased, which is good and uh, mental increased as well. As for uh, gastric emptying, at six months, 12 months, and 24 months, there was improvement in each area. And uh, we used a two hour period, even though four hours is recommended, the first uh, patients never had four hour gastric emptying scan. So I, I kept this. Uh, we did a multivariable analysis suggesting for uh, age, gender, race, and type of surgery. And the SIS and SF36 were correlated as we expected. And there is a correlation with the gastric emptying scan, although it, it's, um, it wasn't statistically significant. It certainly has a trend, and I think with a larger patient population, that would uh, prove to be true. Uh, so our conclusion is that gastric electrical stimulation improves solid phase gastric emptying and symptom scores health and health-related quality of life in patients with refractory gastroparesis. And uh, what we want to do in the future is uh, continue to evaluate these variables and the correlation to make sure that the symptom improvement actually is related to the gastric emptying because there are theories that the, the uh, symptom improvement is actually a vagal nerve stimulation and that there is no improvement in, in emptying. Uh, thank you.